the newest radio show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Deals and Barnes hits one high. It's in deep. It is. A little feedback. Radio, my sports radio. Deals and Barnes hits one high. It's a game. Remix. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are at the end of January. It's the 27th, another beautiful Wednesday. You're listening here on HamiltonRadio.net, simulcast on Facebook. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Daniel Mercado. What's going on, brother? Hello. What's going on? And we are joined by today, thank you very much for making the trip down here, Andy Williams from Simply Sports. What's up, Andy? Hello. What's going on, bro? Ah, good to be back, gentlemen. Good to be back. Great to have you, bud. Yeah, it's great to be back here. Great to be back on the air. And I'm just, I'm ready to do the damn thing, bro. All let right. Me, let me tell you, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do the damn thing. There's a lot of damn things to do. Hey, so, yes. Oh man, bro. Right. Am I gonna have to reel you in again? We have a recap of the AFC and NFC Championship game. Yes. We're, we're going to talk about the upcoming Super Bowl, the future, and the GOAT. Go at it head to head, mano y mano. Okay? Absolutely phenomenal mm-hmm. matchup. I can't wait for this. We have another big name free agent signed in Real Muto, and we have one left in Trevor Bauer. And why is he still <laughs> on the market? That's another. We have the Baseball Hall of Fame debacle. Wow. That's another. We also have some breaking news that came out of the Mets organization. Similar. Yeah, well, not, not really. Not really, yeah. but, it, but we'll Stemming. talk about that. Yeah. But we'll talk about that. Possible. Yes. But listen, guys, I'm excited to get going. I'm, I'm going to ruin my entire afternoon, and I want to start with baseball. I want to start with the Hall of Fame. Guys, I am recently across the board with all sports. Yeah, I've seen the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, um, the Naismith Hall of Fame. You know, wherever, wherever you're looking at the major sports, okay? Right. Sometimes it gets a little watered down as the years go on because you start to see names that you're like, do they really deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, right? So you're, you're, you're sort of, you're left scratching your head and thinking, eh, we probably could have done without them. Absolutely. Eh. Okay. Then you come to a point in time where you have guys like Kurt Schilling, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, who all can't get in the Hall of Fame. But let me tell you, it's not, wow. even, it's not even that I'm upset about them not getting in the Hall of Fame. I'm upset about why they're not getting in the Hall of Fame. So as I'm watching the last few days unfold, it is very, very clear to me that baseball and its way of voting has completely deteriorated into a duty show. I want to so, say the other word, but I'm going to say duty show. Cacas. Okay, cacas. And it's a bunch of people, writers, and social media that dictate 
how you get into the Hall of Fame. And Dan and Andy, what I am most ticked off about is the fact that a guy like Kurt Schilling, who has never disrespected the game for one minute on the field, not one. A gentleman on and off the field, 100%. Well, I wouldn't say off, but on the field. Eh. On the field, no doubt. Everyone knows where his political views are. The guy was a major, he's a major conservative. He was a major Trumpster, okay? He has come out and said things against social media. And he said some, okay, some borderline sketchy things. But let me tell you something. You're not voting the guy based on character. You're voting for what he did during the game. And is Kurt Schilling a Hall of Famer? Views. Is Kurt Schilling a Hall of Famer? 100%. And yes. Kurt... yes. So how is he not in the Hall of Fame? Okay. Well, first, let's let's backtrack here. Kurt Schilling finished, what was it, 15 or 16 votes short, which is still... Yeah, what do you have, 71%? 71.1%. Uh, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens had 62%, which pretty much absolutely nullifies their chance next year when they're last year on the ballot. But after this vote, Kurt Schilling said basically after he saw this was like, I have more trust in the Veterans Committee than I do in baseball writers. Wow. Dude, there's no way you're watching baseball right now with everything going on. There's no way you're watching baseball and you're taking this seriously. Dude, the Hall of Fame in every sport is sacred. Yeah. Correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. No matter Bonds, Sosa, Maguire, it doesn't matter. The fat A-Rod, it doesn't matter. The fact is... The fact is, wow, we have a phone call already. Incredible. Already, let's the, that didn't take Well, long. the caller's got to hold because let me finish what I'm about to oh, say. Oh, yeah, this is good. The fact is, is these guys during a stretch of time in the game, Rafael Palmero, okay? They're, during this time, these guys were up against everybody else who was also using steroids. Roger Clemens was... Now, I'm not going to say he was on record, but he, there was reports of him using HGH, okay? If you have Roger Clemens on HGH against Barry Bonds on HGH, I don't care who wins the battle. It shouldn't matter. It's phenomenal yeah. TV. It Absolutely. shouldn't matter. The last time, bro, before the strike in 94. Now that's an even playing field, no? Yes. That's what we talked about. Before the strike in 94, before 96, okay? Roger Clemens was the best pitcher in Major League Baseball, and it wasn't even close. Bar none. Absolutely. Bar none. Okay? And, not, and then let's talk about McGuire and Sosa. The fact of the matter is, is before 96, when they went on their run, I could, vis I could remember it like it was yesterday. I'm in the kitchen. We were living in, a, in, in the previous town we were in. I'm at home. My mom, who's not a sports fan, all right? We're both watching TV together to watch McGuire break the record. We're watching Sosa, McGuire, hug. I, there's never been a more galvanizing moment other than when Piazza hit the home run post 9-11, okay? There's never been a more galvani galvanizing moment inside of a household with sports than when those guys were chasing the home run record. Yeah. If you're telling me that anybody cared, we knew they were on steroids. You think I care if he's corking his bats? Come on, bro. I'm tired of watching the same thing every single year, and I'm tired of listening to the same thing every single year. It's a bunch of people with too much power, with too much entitlement, getting to vote on a person's whole career and determining whether or not because they're nice guys they deserve to be in the hall of fame dude you can take that and shove it right up your ass because i don't particularly care not one bit what you have to think kurt schilling stepped on a mound with blood coming out of his sock because his stitches were ripping off the guy's foot and he and pitched and he pitched eight strong a gem. absolutely Absolutely. At Yankee if you Stadium. Can, if, you, if you can tell the story of baseball without talking about that bloody sock game, it's it's historical in, in the game of baseball. Absolutely. This is, this is, as a matter of fact, this is a baseball travesty. 
And I'm very upset with the MLB for, for not, not putting these guys in right. after well-deserved. It's a, No, dude, the MLB should be – it goes further. That Right now, Rob Manfred should look at this and say, it is as clear as day. Your political views and affiliations is what kept you out of the Hall of Fame. Nothing else. Nothing else. Pete Rose is out of the Hall of Fame because he bet on his team to win the game. He bet on his team to win the game, and the greatest hitter in the history of baseball is not in the Hall of Fame. Still to this day holds the record. Bananas. I can't believe it. And you're keeping out another great for something that happened outside the sport. Nothing in. I don't care if he looked. I do not care if he looked at a news reporter right in the face and said, you're trash, bro, and you mean nothing to me. Your points of views mean nothing to me. Bro, it's all a matter of opinion. Other sport players are doing it now. It's all a matter of opinion, a la Kyrie Irving. So let me tell you something. Hello. Just because your feelings are hurt, I know it's 2020, and you can get away just because your feelings are hurt, and there's probably a group we can throw you in because you're a pansy. I get it, dude. But can we get past this stage for one minute and do somebody their their due justice and put this guy into the Hall of Fame? Kurt Schilling, I'm, dude, honestly, Kurt Schilling should be like, you know what? Don't put me in the Hall of Fame. I don't want the veterans to put me in the Hall of Fame. I'm better than the Hall of Famers. And if Kurt Schilling said that, I'd get right on board with it. And what I want to do is I want to say thank you to everyone who's with us right now. Sal Angeletti, Steve Hinchman, what's going on? Fred DeRose, Daniel Pena, my grandmother Ziva, how are you doing? John Gonzalez, Johnny Butters, everyone is in the building. We what's are rocking happening? and rolling. We are starting out strong. Daniel Pena, you are correct. He said at this point, assume everyone was on, was on something. But now I'm going to ask you this. Sure. I want your opinions on this. Next year, you know who's on the docket? Alex Rodriguez and Big Poppy. Both yep. of them. Juiced. Juiced. Now what happens? So let me ask you this. A-Rod is beloved in the baseball circles. Absolutely. Big Poppy is beloved in the baseball Everywhere circles. In the world. Yes. Does he get in? Poppy gets in, yes. A-Rod not right away. So Poppy gets the first ballot and A-Rod doesn't. I think Poppy does get the first ballot. Because basically, just based on, yes, his, yes, his play... But also, too, he, he's going to go down as arguably the greatest designated hitter of all time. And Better than Edgar Martinez? Yes. Yes. Wow. 100%. Even I agree. 100%. Wow. It's not even close. That's a hot take. Especially, especially with his postseason work? Are you kidding me? He led them to how many World Series championships in Boston? Absolutely. Yeah. It's wow. not even close. Anthony Grandinetti Jr., what's going on, brother? Eric Mercado, what's going on? Welcome. I'm telling you this right Mercado now. Mercado gang, what's good? So, so okay. So what you're telling me. Yep. They get in. Barry Bonds, the greatest, the greatest home run hitter. Has rest to in peace, Hank Aaron. Has to. Okay? We lost a great one. Yes, we did. Rest Absolutely. in peace, Hank Aaron. But the greatest home run hitter ever, with respect to Hank Aaron, of course. Yes. Barry Bonds, before, look at his statistical yeah. facts. Oh, Kerry, yes. Mitchell, uh, Kerry Mitchell, what's going on? Before, 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 his numbers jumped up. Yeah. The guy was 500 home runs, 500 stolen yeah. bases, first Absolutely. time in history. 100. He didn't need them. But Barry Bonds is a very, very, he was a very cranky man, Okay. The media did not like him, and there was reasons for that. He was very standoffish, okay? So Barry Bonds looked at Terry Simons. What's going on? Terry, the, the thing is, is, is people looked, uh, Barry Bonds looked at McGuire and Sosa and said, I can't have this. They should not be, they should not be what we're looking at as the pinnacle of the game, and Barry Bonds did his thing to make him. Next level, right? Barry, Barry Bonds was one of the scariest hitters to go up against in baseball. So what happens right now? Does Sh should he be Poppy in? Yes, and, no, absolutely. Does Big Poppy and A-Rod get in the Hall of Fame? Poppy gets in, yes. Alex Rodriguez, I have a question over. 
I like I like that they they should both get oh absolutely get in they, they should both get but in. I don't think yes. either one of them get in really I think maybe in a year they they uh, a year after they put everybody else in that you you might have three or four three or four entrants I think I think David Ortiz is so beloved on and off the field I oh, believe I, agree. I believe he gets in on the first ballot but I, look at this look at what they're doing I understand that I understand that. It is a joke. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. One hundred percent. All right. Go. Go ahead and go right, ahead. Let's and get. Patch we have our, a caller. Yeah. Go. Go ahead and pass the caller on through. We. We have a. We have a lot to. We have a lot to handle. So absolutely. Hopefully, whoever's on hold. Let's. Let's get through. And thank you for staying on hold. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it. Welcome La- to my sports radio. Yeah. Who do we got on the phone? Who gentlemen. 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 Who's with us? It is uh, Pat Walsh calling in on the commute home. Pat Walsh, what's up, brother, man? What's going Pat, on, Pat Walsh, what's good, kid? Talk to me. So I, I couldn't be more happy that you started with baseball. Because after everything that's been going on over the past week or two, there's a lot of hot takes going on out there. A ton. Absolutely. A ton. So now yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you something, Pat. You're here with us. Yeah. And first off, I'm going to fire a few questions off at you. Go for it. Ultimately, does Kurt Schilling, Barry Bonds, and Roger Clemens get into the Hall of Fame? They, they, they 100% belong in the Hall of Fame. Are they going to get in? That's a different story. Okay, next year. I mean, uh, now, no, but the, the point that I, I, I make to that is, now, Bonds and Clemens have, what, one year left on the ballot? Correct. Yeah, next year is the last year, and right now, the way that the voting set up, they both got 62% of the vote. So basically, they need another 50 to 60 votes by the writers. To, to, to stay on past the year. No, 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 no to get good. in. That's it, to for get good. in. If not, they don't get in. Oh, to get in. Great. Correct, correct, correct. Now, uh, Kurt Schilling, Kurt Schilling, uh, it, it, listen, it, it's a travesty what's happening to him because he's not getting voted in and it has nothing to do with his baseball merit whatsoever. That's correct. He's not getting he's not getting voted in because of what he said off the field. You said it perfectly, John. You know what? At the end of the day, these baseball purists and I put big quotation marks on it. Big. Yeah. They 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 care about that. Oh well, you know what? He he was he was a little disparaging off the field. So you know what? He can't get in the Hall of Fame. But to look at his career and to see. The numbers he put up in the postseason, not only with the Red Sox, but you know, Arizona. a lot of people forget the, the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2001, in year five of their expansion, beat the powerhouse New York Yankees in seven games in the World Series, yep. and Kurt Schilling was a big part of that. Pat, it was great it, point. It's an, you know what the craziest thing is? I was going to bring that point up, and, and what I was going to say about it was, was – not only was Kurt Schilling a big part, Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling both pitched three games in three games in a seven-game series. Two pitchers were in six of the seven games. And Essentially now anchored the whole team. Anchored the entire team. Which has never, ever happened in, a, in World Series history. And the craziest part about it exactly. is... Exactly. The craziest part about that is, is no matter which way you slice it, right now... We know that there's inning limits. Pitch, starting pitchers don't go past six, seven innings anymore. There's no workhorses. The workhorses died when Roy Halladay left the game. Kurt Schilling, Roy Halladay, Randy Johnson were the last of a dying breed. The fact is, is these guys didn't worry about their careers, didn't worry about the longevity that they could play. They played to bring a championship to their team. They played for their team. They played for the love of the game. They played for their craft. Their craft was being the best pitcher they could possibly be on any given day. And the fact that the writers are keeping this guy out of the Hall of Fame is a travesty. And they, Rob Manfred needs to step in 
he needs to grow a set of coconuts and he needs to come up and say, you know what? We need a total overhaul of the Hall of Fame voting system. Every five years, we need to revamp and give a new set of writers, media, uh, whatever it may be, newspapers, whatever it is, we need to give a new set of people the ability to vote out with the old, in with the new. And I'm telling you right now, the baseball purists, like you said, I am so tired. I am, bro, I'm exhausted of watching TV and seeing guys like this get shafted because of the things that they did outside the sport. For God's sakes, Lawrence Taylor was molesting little children in hotels while snorting coke off their butt cheeks. And fame. the guy's in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. I'm so tired of it, bro. Yep. yep. You, you can't have that, that, that double-edged sword. You can't, you can't be two-sided on it. It's either yeah. they all go in because of their greatness on the field or not. And you know what? As I was growing up, yeah. I, I, I felt the same way. My father told me, no, it's, the, I mean, it's all about the sport and it's all that. But even my father will tell you to this day, Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. These guys should be in the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame 100%, and there shouldn't I, even be a question. 100% agree. And, and, and you know what? It, it ties into the Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens thing, that if you're going to make the exception for those guys, Pete Rose should be the first one to get that exception. Yes, sir. He belonged in the Hall of Fame 30 years ago. Preach. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you one last question here. It's I'm going to. It's going to be one A. It's going to be one A and one B before before we. I'm going to have you go and before we start getting back into into the show because we do have a full docket with Andy on the show here. So last question, which seg oh, yeah. which segues to a part B. Number one. Does Big Poppy and A Rod make it into the Hall of Fame because they're liked? And one B is Big Poppy a better DH than Edgar Martinez was, who was the only DH to go into the Hall of Fame. So when so answer us those two questions, then then you can head on out. All right, all right. So the answer one A, yes, Big Poppy. I believe personally is out of the two of them, is the first ballot Hall of Famer. A hundred percent. You know what? The, the guy has had a fantastic career. He was uh, very clutch in the playoffs. You know, was a big part of that Boston team getting their first World Series in 80-something years. You know, that that is... There's no question that, that Big Poppy gets in. A-Rod, on the other hand, is another one of those asterisk guys. Mm -hmm. You know what? He got in trouble for the steroids. He admitted it. He did his suspension. He came back, got his 3,000 hits. You know, he got his last World Series with the, with the Yankees in 09. You know, but he's another asterisk guy that is probably going to spend maybe not as long as Bonds and, 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 uh, as Bonds and Clemens sitting in the background, but he's, he's not a first ballot because of those reasons. Hit the nail on the head. Okay. And, and then, and then, and then to, to go straight into to to one B. So we, you know, short and sweet. Um, Edgar Martinez, especially growing up in the time period that we did, it, it was very hard to think of another guy that was in, uh, was strictly a designated hitter that was that was better than Edgar Martinez, and that was until until we got to saw David Ortiz. Yep. And then David Ortiz, what he did in the postseason with, with those same exact Red Sox and how beloved he is by the people of Boston. And then on top of that, goes back to the Dominican Republic and gets shot and almost dies. Yep. I mean, the, the guy is a true success story to take, you know, a struggling franchise that always finished second fiddle to the Yankees and finally win a World Series. And then on top of that, win more and it, i mean the guy hit big home run after big home run every every single time he was called upon that and he was a classy guy on and off the field mm -hmm. yeah definitely True. very you know, he was always he was, he, was, he, was, he was always supportive he was always you know he was always a class act on the field can't argue that 
Pat Walsh, man, thank you for uh, for choosing us as obviously, you know, the show you watch, listen to on, on your car ride home every day, bro. Love you, buddy. And, we appreciate uh, you, bud. And thank you, as always, for, for the yeah, good that- support. And thanks for staying on hold, man. Thanks for letting me rant long enough to stay on hold to get in here with us. Absolutely, brother. And, guys, thank you for having me. I appreciate you giving me the time. And uh, enjoy. Andy, uh, always good to see you as well, brother. Always and, good to see uh, you, Pat. Next time you want me to take to you. your money at cards, you let me know. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, brother. Take care. Listen. All right, guys. It's uh, the Baseball Hall of Fame, baseball in general. Um, baseball's become very, very, very polarizing. Um, just in general with a lot of things. You know, I mean, listen, A Rod stats, guys. I just want to read you. I want to read you a, a few things here, just to put things in perspective. The guy was a three-time MVP. Mm-hmm. He was a runner-up twice, third place voting once. He was essentially on the MVP ballot every single Single year year. except five in his 22 year career 696 home runs over 2000 rbis yeah 300 stolen bases the guy had a career 295 batting average and by the way his batting average only dipped just because of the later years it had nothing to do with with his really his entire career right for 17 years he was consistent um if you remove those last few years he's well over 300 oh well well over uh, 300. An all-star. Probably 360, something. I think an, it is. an all-star yeah. in virtually mm-hmm. every single year he played. Um, it's it, three. Listen, it's two-time gold glove, batting title, 10-time silver slugger, 14-time all-star. Oh, absolutely. Three-time bro. major league player of the year. Yeah. The guy is, um, any way you slice it, it doesn't matter. And by the way, when we talk about players being busts in the first round after being drafted. Alex Rodriguez drafted number one overall and lived up to every single Mm -hmm. second, every single minute of it. And the guy is a baseball savant. With no matter what team he was on either. No matter what team. The guy was a baseball savant. He, the players love him. Baseball IQ was out the roof. His knowledge, his knowledge that, that he delivers to the youth on and off the field is incredible. And his and, wife is smoking hot. Oh yeah. Which you hey, get low. you get major brownie points. And and also too to go along with the baseball IQ, on Sunday night baseball, he is his oh, baseball it, IQ absolutely. is through the roof. Oh man, it, it, it's great watching. Just what he to. shares on the air is just I almost vote A-Rod into the Hall of Fame because of J Lo. Oh, that's an automatic. I would. I would it's an too. automatic. Yeah, I would. She levels him up. Oh my God. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, first of all, that's a very pretty couple. Smoke show. Smoke 100%. Show. Hey, I, I, every time I see them out, first of all, J-Lo gets younger as she ages. Am I right or wrong? 100%. Okay. And you know who get, also gets younger as they age? Jennifer Aniston. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Every time I see Jennifer Aniston, she gets younger. Mm-hmm. I, for some, I watched Horrible Bosses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Classic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Classic movie. Classic I saw, I'm like, comedy. wait a second. I'm like... Did Jennifer Aniston have a have a much younger sister that looks exactly mm. like her? No, bro. Because she's I, got the goods. Because I don't understand. She Jennifer Aniston and J Lo are just yeah. unbelievable. They get they get go, more gorgeous as they age. They, they do it for me. Almost like, like a me. fine wine. They Almost do like for me. me. I age so well. Other than the dad bod, I age so well. Look at this beard, bro. <laughs> now I want to ask you. I want to. I want to stay. I'm going to stay with baseball. Yes. Okay, a few, a few pieces started to fall. Okay, uh, we saw Lindor go to the Mets, right? Yes, Carrasco go to the Mets. We see Carrasco go to the Mets. We see DJ go to the Yankees. Yes, stay with the Yankees. We see Corey Kluber go to the Yankees. We see James Tyon, not Talon. I thought it was, mm-hmm. but it's actually James Tyon. They gave up way too many prospects. They give up four, but but now listen. Michael Kay, obviously the voice of the Yankees. Yep. He was talking about the prospects they gave up and he normally he he's a tough critic. Absolutely. And he wasn't as concerned mm. with it. James, see what people don't understand is so he had 14 wins in 2018 then he had testicular cancer. 
right? Yeah. He had Tommy John twice. He's coming off it now. If he, if he's right, it is a scary yeah. proposition to put that sort of talent into the roster. Very, very cheap price. I think two point eight million. Corey Kluber came with an eleven million price tag. Is it worth it? I'm not sure. Corey uh, Corey Kluber, I think, so only pitched. 30 innings? Yeah, the jury's still out on Kluber. 30 innings total in two years? Yeah, ju- yeah, jury's still out. Um, but the question is this. If if you're, if you're any team out there, you're the Mets, we still have Trevor Bauer on the market. Trevor Bauer's commanding $36 million. I'm going to let you guys discuss, <laughs> why, discuss yay or nay on Trevor Bauer, and then I'm going to give you my take on Trevor Bauer. So, Andy, go ahead, okay. brother. Okay, all right, Trevor Bauer. Uh, are we talking about Trevor Bauer going to the Mets or Trevor Bauer in general? Um, I, Tell me anything. Okay, Trevor Bauer going to the Mets, I think, would be absolutely disastrous with what has transpired thus far because you don't need any more toxicity in your clubhouse right now. Absolutely. Um, and as for the fact that he is commanding, what was it you said, $36 million a year? Um, he's not worth $36 million a year. Okay, let's get that Let's get that straight. 36 mil is more than Garrett Cole makes. Exactly. Right oh, go ahead. Exactly. So apparently Steve Cohen is launching an offer to get uh, Trevor Bauer on the Mets, which – you have the starting rotation already of Jake DeGrom, uh, Carrasco, Stroman, Stroman, Syndergaard, Mats. Mats, and Peterson. And Peterson already. And then you're going to add a guy for $36 million a year who's a total head case? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm with you, Andy. I don't think he's worth the money. Not, not because I mean, if you look at the stats and you look at the ERA, he's it's, not worth. It's he's fair, not worth the but headache. It, but it's absolutely the the way he was. And and John and I have mentioned this before on the show uh, regarding uh, players who tend to troll teams just to try to get money. Mm-hmm. And you mean just get their name out in the news? I, I I don't agree with it. I don't think he's worth it. Absolutely, if you're going to pay that kind of money, I would have paid it to Garrett Cole. Uh, there, there's no way that this guy comes in here and changes the clubhouse and, and right. Matt Harvey's the whole thing. I, I mean, now, we've already gone through this. I mean, now, now, granted, granted, yes, he won the Cy Young. He led the Reds to the postseason, first time in what was it, thirty years? Yeah, listen, he pitched it, ten games, bro. Yeah, he I, pitched I, I ten games. It wasn't, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, it, wasn't it wasn't like anything he, special. Exactly, and I don't think I don't think his short body of work in that time right. merits that kind of money. Exactly. To be, to be trolling teams and be trying to come to New York, and I'm I'm very disappointed. Yeah, with absolutely. Uncle Stevie Cohen trying to put him up for thirty some million a, yeah. a year. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Put the money. It's elsewhere. disgusting. It's disgusting. Really. Put put the money into something. Of better use. John, go ahead. I mean, Who does he think he is? Bobby Bonilla? No. <laughs> okay. So let me – so I want to I want to. I want to try and get this straight just so I can wrap my mind around it so you guys sure. can help me understand. Okay. The NL Central last year, all right, yep. was hot garbage. Facts. Okay. Uh, about as good as the NFC East, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> – so, the division he pitched in, a whopping 10 games, was hot garbage. He faced nobody. Yeah. Also, he, yeah, go ahead. Also, he has a career 3.9, 4.0, yeah. a 4 ERA. Yeah. DeGrom, who has had historical numbers, not great numbers, historical numbers. His ERA is less than sub- 2. Sub- 2.0, yeah, which only a handful of pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball. Let's diamond. let's go right <laughs> to our baseball purists in the history of baseball have done. And you want him to get paid more than, than DeGrom? Garrett Cole? Talk to him, Johnny. To Cole. Johnny, talk to, to him, Johnny. More Come on, than man. DeGrom. Talk to him, Johnny. Every <laughs> single year, Trevor Bauer 
should have a sign mm. on his dumb forehead that says insert mouth insert foot here with an arrow pointing down to his mouth because once a year it's a guarantee Teed meltdown. You know what he does? He takes a ball. He thinks he's so cute, and he throws it into the outfield, and he disrespects Terry Francona. And then he goes into the game, and he disrespects the next the next skipper that's in there. And then he goes into social media. He thinks he's playing general matter and says, any team I go to would be a great addition. Hey, bro. Slow your roll. You played yourself. Congratulations. You played yourself. Because I'm going to tell you right now. Trevor Bauer is not only a subpar pitcher with one and a half years, one and a half, not two, one and a half practice? I'm talking about practice? One and a half, <laughs> okay? Seasons out of the six seasons he's been a pitcher, and you give him money that, that would rival the creme de la creme of players – the Harpers, the Trouts, the Bowers? Excuse me? Psych again, Batman. Listen, Stevie Cohen, everything he's done, everything. I've not only I've not only liked, I've thoroughly enjoyed. I am fine with him not overspending on Springer going into the luxury tax when there's plenty of other options with Ozuna, with Bradley to add the fielding and the depth to the team. We added James McCann. We went out and gave a box of Cracker Jacks and a bag of peanuts for Lindor and Carrasco. I am fine with every single thing Stevie Cohen has done, even down to Jared Porter and his and his prick picks to women, getting it under the carpet, getting us out of the bad light. I've liked every single thing that Stevie Cohen and the Mets franchise is doing in Sandy Alderson. There is no reason when you are trying to build a brand new culture in the clubhouse, a culture of winning. And we're going to get into another team that's trying to do that also in the NFL, Danny. And me, you're trying to go into a brand new culture. And then you bring in a guy like Trevor Bauer, who every other day <laughs> is in social media talking out of his puchis, as my grandmother would say. There's no way you bring this cancer into the locker room. A matter of fact, Trevor Bauer, you should pay us to say your name. Absolutely. You're he a walking dumpster. And if he goes to the Mets, I'll be disgusted that I have to say every five days, man, I hope Trevor Bauer does good. I don't wish harm on <laughs> I don't wish harm on anybody. On anybody. But man oh man, do I hope that Trevor Bauer between now and the time he gets signed stubs his toe on a Lego, falls down his porch steps, burns his hand, breaks a finger, I don't know, Can something I that will hinder the ability for the Mets to sign him to a dumb contract. Go ahead. Okay, so what you're saying is, honestly, you, you don't want Trevor Bauer on your team. So let me ask you this question. If he was still available, would you take Blake Snell or Trevor Bauer right now at this moment in time? I can't, bro. <laughs> I can't. I, can't. I, I knew he was going to do it. Come so, on. So, Johnny, you're saying no, Trevor Bauer does not deserve Blake Snell money. No, first wait a all, minute first now. Of all, first of all, Blake Snell is the Eminem of Major League Baseball. <laughs> you love him. He's your boy. Okay. I am out. You love the, Blake Snell. I'm telling you right now. Hot take. There is two people. Call them the Eminem. There is two people that I would, at 35 years old, with <laughs> a dad M &M bod washed about? up. Chocolate or peanuts? I would literally, I would, I would fight two people on the spot. Blake Snell and Nick Merckx, that dumb streamer <laughs> on Twitch. Two people I'd fight on the spot. I'll tell you right now. Who, who would you take on the Mets right now? Trevor Bauer or Blake Snell? My daughter, who's 18 months old. <laughs> They're both Good a answer. heaping pile of garbage. Good answer. 
If 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 it had to be, I'll answer. If it that. had to be, if it had to be, I would absolutely if take Blake Snell. Yes, me too. Me down, me if too. someone held me down, he's with grittier. A gun, he's, he's tougher. Is the tougher guys handle yeah, tougher yeah, yeah, situations? Yeah, yeah. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Deeper in the postseason. Yeah. Deeper in the postseason. He's season. as gritty as I just you wanted wiping to answer. your ass with sandpaper. <laughs> My guy, Andy drove like six hours to I'm come and done. see us. I just want to answer his question. Answer his question. All He's right. not gritty. It's been answered. <laughs> I'm done. Right. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. I don't want either of them. Okay. All right. So speaking. All right. Let's kind of let's money. let's kind of sp- stick with the Give me Hank Aaron. I got that Blake Snow. Money. God rest his soul. Um, R.I.P. And Larry King. So wow. yeah, Larry, absolutely. Wow. That's right. Um, oh. s- similar to Mets news, uh, another one of your buddies, uh, Brody Van Wagnen, love Brody, is now <laughs> the C- is now the chief operating officer of Rock Nation. Nice man. Is there... how, how do you feel? How, how do we feel about that right now? I, f- I feel great because Rock Nation is not, not significant to me. So great. <laughs> Brody, make that money, dude. If there's dumb Great people spot out, for him. if there's dumb dude. people out there that'll give you money, I love it, dude. Take it, take it, yeah. bro. By all means, listen. By the way, if somebody paid me, I gotta see how he relates to those to those players on that. On yeah, that, on that, on that, uh, canvas of uh, <laughs> if, of a list of dude. And I, now he's the cheap operating officer. If somebody paid so me, I, who put me in the middle of these two? If someone paid me millions of dollars to do graphics design and I've millions never opened up a graphics design program in my life, mm-hmm. would I say no? I don't know how to do that. I would take the millions and figure it out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Brody Van Wagen. Yeah, how much does the class cost you? So Brody Van. <laughs> so Brody Van Wagen essentially said, right? You got a lot of geech left over. You know what I'm saying? Brody yeah. Van, Brody Van Wagen essentially said, "Listen, Hove. If if you wanna if you wanna pay me, ho uh, uh, Hove is in the building." Rock Nation. Ho, it's your boy. Ho. Ho. <laughs> if you want to pay me millions, ho, I'm in. I'll do whatever you want me to do, including bad deals, bad trades, whatever you want, ho. And ho was like, yo, son. Just son right here, The son. rock's in the building. <laughs> the rock's in the area. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Dude, it doesn't matter. It's your boy. You're not going to turn down money. You're going to do it. So for that, I say, Brody. <laughs> God bless you. Get that paper, son. Thank God for America. Thank God you can do whatever it is you oh do, which I, which I I don't know what you do yet. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're still trying to figure that out as we speak. But I think he's still trying to figure it out. That's yeah. Right. But like God John bless. said, he got the money. He's gonna take a yeah, class. He'll have a lot him. of money left over. Good yeah. for him. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go he's gonna go to Brookdale and take a, a graphics designer class. Sure. Yeah. Good for him. A marketing class very quickly. Nice. This is not a part of the uh, 30% on unemployment right now. There it is. See? That's <laughs> it. That's true. That's it. That is true. So now that we're past all this. Yes. All right, let's rip uh, we, this Band-Aid we have off. One, we have one more. The Phillies signed Real Mudo. Real Mudo. Yes. Five mil. Five years. $115 million. Mm-hmm. 28 mil a year for a catcher. How do you feel about yeah. that? Yeah. That's a lot of bread for a That's catcher. a lot. Of, that's a very much a lot of bread i don't know if i would have paid that much for real Mu- real mudo but hey i mean he's a he's a good catcher is he worth 28 i love when someone says he's a good he's good when someone gets paid he's a good it's catcher really good. It, it lets me he's okay you no know, I, it lets me know. He's not twenty eight million. How bad I could feel about my own life when I look right. in the mirror and say, "Man, I can't be good at anything." It makes twenty million. <laughs> Listen, man, where did I go wrong? Listen, I yeah. think uh, I I, th- I think I agree with Andy. All right, regarding it, he's not worth that money. No. However, however, we have seen a huge, huge, huge decline in the value of a catcher. Massive. Look at Gary Sanchez. I mean, it's. I mean, I mean oh, don't even, don't even start with that. Listen, Funk Master Flex Night. <laughs> Hard to get a ticket. Hard to get a ticket. Hard to get a ticket. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> for a Yankees game. Listen, I, I, the <laughs> Gary Sanchez. He shouldn't even be in there. I don't know how he's rostered. Anyway. I don't know either. He's, he's, he's definitely. He's definitely. You know, what I mean, AAA player. According to the same baseball savants, he's a top five catcher. Yeah, but listen, playing, paying for Real Muto, they had a spot to pay. They can pay him what he wanted. They wanted to keep that big name. Let them keep the big names, because look what they did. Who else did they sign? Big name and did they Exactly. And where did they go? <laughs> Squad Who else did they sign? Tell me the other guy that's on their team that came from Washington. 
Oh, a uh, hand? Talking about? Yeah. Like hand sign, yeah. Ten, so ten they, and a half mil. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just filling spots, and, and they're going to go well, nowhere again well, this year. good players, though. Hand was coveted. No, ha- no, Hand was actually a good player. I understand. But look, he really was. Look where they're spending all the he big was. money, though, on the players that are just... <laughs> Are just uh, the name. He's not. He's not worth twenty eight million dollars a it. year, though. I will That's... not pay this you know, for these you know players. You know who's worth twenty eight mil? Me on your for only page. What is that? What, what's 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 only oh, fans? Oh, oh, only fans. Only fans. You're on. You're on only fans. I'm not, but I will if it gets me twenty eight mil. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll be good at whatever you want me. That's oh, right. Man. It's too early. It's not even five, and we're going off the rails here. I mean, dude, what? Are, what is we, the guy, we went off the rails what is, at what was it, three fifty-seven? Yeah, it was like. What does the minutes. guy got to do around here to make twenty-eight mil and be good? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that your is that your porn music? Oh is that, yeah. Is that, is that your porn? Music? That, There's no porn music like seventies porn music. <laughs> oh lordy. Interesting. I didn't know. I, I was like, what? What? Beat is this? There it is. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Listen, guys. This is a great baseball segment. It I was. Love it. I yeah. love it, dude. It was great. I want to I wanna go over to Huge. what's really been, obviously, the fireworks this last week in the NFL. Yes. Okay. Let's get it. We have, this past weekend, we had... Hold, hold on. Hold on, John. And I don't mean to cut you off here. Yes, um, yes. Well, no. No, actually, I didn't. But okay. I, need, I, need to, I need to settle a debate here that the two of you have had. <laughs> for the last oh, like couple he, of weeks, set the desk on fire now. Um, I, I know you're not going to bring up Devontae Adams. Oh, he's... we're we're yeah yeah we're, yeah we're going to bring it up. Okay, go ahead. Between the two of you, go um, ahead. first of all, I'll start with Dan. Dan, who do you think is the best uh, wide receiver in football right now? In football right now, playing? No, just period. Right now, like as ever? we speak. No, right now, as we speak. That's Why what do I'm you saying. keep saying different things? The guy said right now, and you said playing, and then he said no right now, and then you said forever. Like, bro, what, why? Why did like? Because he confused me when I no, said it. No, there, there's no time, confusing. So I asked them two different questions. Yeah. I would have to say D Hop. Okay. But wait a minute. On Sunday, you posted on your Facebook page that Tyreek yeah. Hill was the best wide receiver in football. Please argue me. Yeah, I said, you know, please Dan prove talks. me wrong because you know, you know so I was trolling. So wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I was trolling John. I don't know why. Now, you have, that's how you put your posts up. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. So, so wait a minute. So, so after we had the Daniel, big blowout, <laughs> Daniel. So you have you have come on this air. Yeah. You've come on and you've said for the past what is it two to three weeks that Devonte Adams is the best wide receiver in football. Now all of a sudden you have flip flopped from Tyreek Hill to now today you have said DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in football. I think DeAndre Hopkins is is the best. Wide receiver in football playing, hands talent wise. I'm going to tell you the question John posed to me a few weeks ago that uh-huh. started this whole riff uh-huh. was if you were a GM and you were starting a team and your only choices were Stefan Diggs and Devontae Adams, I'm taking the guy that has 18 touchdowns as opposed to the guy that has eight touchdowns. Okay. I don't care if he's got 200 yards more in that year. Okay. And 15 more catches. Dumb uh, argument. Yes. Thank you. Um, listen. First of all, when you and I learned this very well from a very very smart man who's sitting next to you. When you have one you have to be proven. one argument, do not flip flop forty five different ways. This is all credibility. Yes, he did it. Okay, uh, he did it. My God, he did it, and, and he did it, and he did it, and he did it. I actually wrote it on that post, Andy, just so you know it? that okay. I was trolling John. You ready for it? You ready for it? Yeah. You ready? I'm, I'm going to give you All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, We're I'm talking Stefan I'm, I'm Diggs gonna go, and Devontae Adams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go even a step further Get with ahead, this. Yeah. Okay. If you don't, I will. So I got okay. Shovel. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, right, so. You're going to shovel from inside the ground up? That's right. Sure. Ridiculous. DeAndre Hopkins, let, let me read you off his numbers for this year in 2020. Fourth in total yards per game. Okay. Third in average catches per game. All right. Okay. Second in total receiving yards. Okay. Do you have these notes written down on your hand? No. Oh, okay. 
off the top of the dome. Do we have to fact check this? Sure. No, Ken, I, can, if you'd I like. can see right through. Yeah, exactly. That, why do you think? Why do you think I got a haircut? Clean view. Exactly. Oh, very, very good. Go ahead. You're not alone. So now we get to the fun stuff. Yards per completion does not rank in the top ten. Wow. Receiving touchdowns does not rank in the top ten. Wow. You have the audacity to sit up here as a co-host of a radio show 100%. and say that DeAndre Hopkins does not rank in any one of the major five categories as a wide receiver and say that he is the best wide receiver in football. I think he's the most talented is Can, what I just said. No, someone give me the Funk Master Flex. Seriously, sound, like sound effects. That makes no sense. That makes zero sense. Okay. I think he's pl- – listen, he's playing with a rookie quarterback. He switched teams and He's not a rookie quarterback. He's not a rookie quarterback. Okay, so uh, two years. So he's not a rookie quarterback. Right, so, but he's two years in. and, he, and DeAndre He's not Hopkins, a rookie. But the, this is DeAndre Hopkins. First year playing with him. Okay, great. Right, so he's learned a new offense. Great. You're going to see you I bet you're going to see an exponential growth in him next year and I bet you he ends up top 3, top 3 receiver next year. DeAndre Hopkins was lucky he was the fifth best wide receiver in football this year. You Okay. I'm just going to squash your argument of 18 touchdowns. You ready for it? I'm going to squash it. For you, I'm going to squash it. Yeah, can you, you can squash it. I'm still if, no, no, if it's listen. between Stefan Diggs and Devontae Adams, I'm taking okay. Devontae Adams. Okay. Right, no, no, but, no, 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 no. Only can I can I finish can I finish? Real quick. I'm gonna yeah, get ten, ten seconds. Ten All seconds. right, fine. If you want me to pick between Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs, I'll say this. You take Devontae Adams off the Green Bay Packers, they're still eleven and five. You take Steph Diggs off of Buffalo, they are lucky that they are a five hundred. Thank you. So my point my I try to make this point Cole Beasley online. played played with, with don't, broken don't, legs, no, 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 and he still got no, 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 got, don't give me the got do not give me the Cole Beasley art, Cole argument. Beasley, bro, Cole Beasley. Do not give me the Cole that Beasley proves, argument. That proves that that on, Josh is, Josh Allen's play was exponentially better this year, and that's what elevated. It's a the combination reason, of, of him and Stephon Diggs. It's not Allen just that Stephon Diggs. What was the only difference in that offense this year? He had Cole Beasley last year. Well, and by the way, Devin Singletary was also one of the great premier running backs. Yes, players. he was. And he wasn't as productive this year. What made Josh Allen's play exponentially better? Stephon Diggs. The only addition, you, bro. you could say that, but that. There's it's no, not that we can there's say nothing. It, there's no, it's not that we can say it. The yeah, stats are right know. there. Damn. No, he played so much better this year. He did not play anything like that last year. His accuracy has changed. His completion, uh, his completion percentage is like twenty percent higher. The the no. jump that Josh no. Allen made, you cannot take that away, and okay. say that that and did well, not. And, that and, did and not, why was that? And did why not was? Help. And why is that? Stephon Diggs is okay. numbers on on his receptions and and his yards. All right, it's fine. You gave me. You said Devonte Adams. You said you would take him because you take the guy with 18 touchdowns. Absolutely. Okay, that's fine. You know who else had 18 touchdowns? And I want you to tell me. I, 18 touchdowns, 1,200 rushing yards in a season um, for, for an NFL team. And Good. recently, in 2016, I don't know if you could think of it off the top of your head, but can you? The, the running back a few years ago, 18 tutties, 1,200 yards rushing. Was that Hunt? No, I mean it was. It's it's a good guess because he's a he's a premier running back, Legarrette Blunt. Mm-hmm. Oh, so now let me ask you something. Yeah, exactly. Good. At any moment in time in your life, did you wake up in the morning? <laughs> the sun is out. <laughs> you look at your beautiful wife and you say, "You know, Stephanie, <laughs> Legarrette Blunt is the, the man. Le- he's got eighteen touchdowns. Legarrette Blunt is the man. best he's running the back I in got football. On my team." No, bro. You didn't. Because no. no matter if he had 50 touchdowns, LeGarrette Blunt is cacas. Okay, bro? So if your argument you're... is out. No, because if, if you're if you're talking about, all right, am I picking a running back or am I picking a, a wide receiver? We're comparing wide receivers. You're talking about two completely different positions. <laughs> bro, you just you went with the guy that had the touchdowns. So I gave you a guy that had a comparable touchdown. It's not just touchdowns, though. You're talking about at the receiver <laughs> position. But Name you, me another guy that's got 18 touchdowns at the receiver position. Go ahead, and I'll, and I'll tell you my answer. But I'll, you just but, said to me. But Okay. So but, we're only going. Okay. But, no, right, it's no, two no. on one. I'll take you both. It's all right. Okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Doesn't even rank number one no, in any wide receiver no statistical categories problem. in the even NFL. The Devontae Packers, Adams? Even no, no, Packers, no, 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 no. Oh. Even though the Packers, statistically, would still be 11-5 and five without him. Win more. 
without and him. have more productivity without, without him, him on the field. I'm not saying that they're better without him. They're not. Right. They're not. There's no doubt Devonta Adams is a major asset. To his team and to the NFL and to any team he would be on. Major. Okay. It is a fact. The Packers are 4-0 and all without him. That's it, bro. And last year, the Bills were 10-6. and six. Okay? Josh Allen had a 13 percentage increase this year mm -hmm. with the same offensive line, the same running backs, the same wide receivers yeah. with only one addition. The difference is this. When you have a premier playmaker... Okay, your quarterback now knows that he can make small mistakes on the field and that guy will make up the difference, meaning he overthrows him, underthrows him, throws behind him. Diggs will go get it and your completion percentage will go up. Also, if you have a premier playmaker who is commanding double coverage, what does that do for Cole Beasley? Puts him against the linebacker in the slot position. Puts him against a dime corner or a nickel corner who is not prepared to take a wide receiver right. of the skill level. Exactly. Therefore, the throws are easier to make with much bigger windows for Josh Allen to throw into. Yes. Why is Aaron Rodgers' stats better with Devontae Adams off the field than when he's on? Because Aaron Rodgers is a football god. Okay? And Josh mm. Allen is a good QB. <laughs> yes. So when he has an elite talent on the field, it makes him better. That's why. And it also helps that Aaron Rodgers has about 15 targets to throw to. I don't know any of their names. I don't even need to. Lazard, it doesn't matter who he passes to. Vonda Scantling. They're, they <laughs> all just get the job done. Exactly. Because Aaron Rodgers carves you up like a thanksgiving turkey bro it doesn't matter when's the last time you looked at me and said yo josh allen is carving dudes up stop i'll wait come on bro the other day i texted the, uh, the... what i didn't say carving but i said wow josh allen's having a big game oh okay great yeah awesome okay so so one time this year my co-host texted and me and said josh allen's be... having a great and it just game. happened to be the other day all i'm telling you this is if you had to pick five quarterbacks in the nfl five Right now, name them. Five. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, fifth. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Lamar Jackson. You put Jackson over Big Ben? Yes. Okay, so hold on. So hold on. You didn't have Russell Wilson in there, but you had Josh Allen. Yep. Yep. Right now. You would have Josh Allen over Russell Wilson. Yeah, I would. Right now. Did we do a temperature check when we came in here? No. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because I, I don't really... You had me with the points on the receiver stuff, but you, you lost me yeah. right there. Bro, are you... No, seriously, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to start breathing into this I'm good. Mic. Deshaun Watson? You have him over Deshaun Watson? Yes. Right now. Wow. All right, dude, you lost all credit. Well, this is, all right, fine. This is, <laughs> fine. I'm sorry, John. Whatever your argument was, it was out the window. All right, fine. Bro, all because right. the top the top five quarterbacks, hands down, it doesn't even matter which way you look at it. And by the way, Drew Brees, Tom played, Brady, Drew Brees. Played, yeah. with, played with a torn rotator cuff. So once that's healed, even at his age, you're talking Drew Brees, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. Bro, I, I mean, dude, it's... By the way, it's not even close. And then then you can say Josh Allen in his one year of playing nice quarterback. Oh, by the way, I take Matt Stafford also. So you're, the fact is, is there's no way one year Josh Allen is you're telling me. I'm, I've said it many of times on this show. I'm not a one of you done for me lately. I'm a, I'm, I'm a guy of sure. law yep. of yeah. averages. Okay. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. A law of averages. I got you. Eventually... You'll have a good season, but you will come back down to your laws of average. So whatever you are, you are. Bill Parcells said it best. You are whatever your record says you are. So the fact that it matters, if Josh Allen has a 58% completion rating and one year he's got a 69%, I bet you next year he's closer to 65. 
because he's going to come down to his laws of average. He's not going to stay at 70%. You want to know why? Because the only person who ever stayed at 70% was Drew Brees, one of the best QBs to ever do it. So you're not going to tell me that Josh Allen is all of a sudden going to be upper echelon. So I'm telling you right now, the laws of average will eventually take over. They will come into effect. Josh Allen is not a top five quarterback. And that's right. the way that it is. Okay. That, and, and I understand your point, and you, you make a very valid point. But for the both of you, uh, I just want to talk about Kirk Cousins for a second. Kirk Cousins, 2019 totals. He's got 26 touchdowns, and that's with Stephon Diggs. 3,600 yards with Stephon Diggs. 69% completion, passing completion. 444 attempts, 300, 307 completions out of that. In 2020, without Stefan Diggs, he's got 349 completions, 516 attempts. He's a 67, which is a little bit, two points less, a point and a half less. And he's got 4,200 yards, 4,265 and 35 touchdowns. So if Stefan Diggs is the man, like you're saying, shouldn't Kirk Cousins' numbers have dropped? Uh, can you tell me what the Vikings went this year and what they went last year? That'd We're be, a, that'd be a big fat number, nowhere. Right? No, no, can you tell me what they did? They still went nowhere. Wait, wait, wait. So last year they were playoffs. This year they went seven and nine. They went to playoffs and, and lost. La Bills went to the playoffs and last lost. Last year. So is that because of Stephon Diggs too? This year they went further. Because that's the only that's the only common denominator, this, right? The common denominator is they went further with but Stephon they, Diggs. They still lost, right? Of course, but they went further Just with saying, Stephon man. Diggs. I'm not saying the that Vikings the Buffalo Bills are not better. Without Stephon Diggs, they regressed. They re did they not regress? They went from ten and six. To seven and nine. Passing distance. Yards per attempt, 8.3, as opposed to 8.1 when he had Stefan Diggs. I mean, I don't understand. They have another. Okay, they, hold on a second. They have another. They have another. They have another year. The fact of the matter is, is they were in the playoffs last year. Right, Dalvin but, Cook still led the league in rushing. Bro, or the, second in rushing. The distance that they make it in the playoffs is not based on one player. Why is it not? It has to because be. Because it's a team effort. They went no, from it's ten not. And, they went from 10 it's and football. 6. football. Football is the, mo the most team-needy sport. Everything about this team Everybody has to do their, their every, thing. But everything increased on the offensive side. They went from 10 and 6 to 13 and 3. So then how do you explain ja uh, Minnesota's Josh increase Allen's in all their stats except, except for the wins? Except their overall record which plummeted after losing after losing a pro bowl a pro bowl wide receiver who helped the offense. I got 10 stats that tell me that your one stat is wrong, man. And and I have the only stat that matters that tells you you're wrong. All right. The fact is this, I argue all the time that Dak Prescott Holds no water when it comes to negotiations with the Cowboys, right? I say how much I hate him. Okay. I just, okay. Mm -hmm. The minute Dak Prescott left, the offense plummeted. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is, is no matter how much trash I talk about Dak Prescott, the value, the writing is on the <laughs> wall. Okay? It's true. I'm letting you know right now, no matter what you say about Stefan Diggs, the writing is on the wall. I'm not making up fictional characters. Bro, I'm telling you this right now. We're not talking Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. We're talking actual facts that even Facebook can't shut me down for. Okay? Josh Allen and the Bills were 10 and 6. They're now 13 and 3. Josh Who won Allen... that poll you put up? What? Between Stefan Diggs and, and Devontae Adams. Who, Who cares about a Facebook poll? Who won that... no, Honestly. No, no, no. Devontae Adams did. Okay. But, but, here, but by the way, I, I was trolling you with that poll, so you know. I know. I reached out to 10 people and told them to vote for Stefan Diggs. I'm letting you know right now that the poll was swayed and should have been further Devontae Adams. I'm letting you know I would take Devontae Adams also. Okay, because that's not what you said. Of course it's not what I said, because what I'm telling you is... I when we're it, not supposed to flip-flop. When it comes to a team game, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Just a bit outside. Guys, you're not Let's move on. You're not understanding. I'm going to make Agree my, to disagree. My mouth, my I'm going to make my point right now. Yeah, I'm listening. Go you ahead, ready? Go ahead. We're talking about the Bills and we're talking about the Packers, okay? Yes, the, two teams completely on a different spectrum. The Bills would the Bills are a better team with Stefan Diggs than the Packers are with DeVonta Adams. That was the yes. only point I was making. Yeah. Devonta Adams is much more of a physical specimen. Mm -hmm. He breaks tackles. He stiff arms. He, he catches the ball. I've seen Devonta Adams go up and catch the ball better. I've seen him demand more double or triple coverage. I've seen him get open a little better. What you cannot 
ever change. What you cannot is the impact that Stephon Diggs has had on it. the Bills. So the fact that him has the facts. Stephon now Diggs we're has in had agreement. a bigger impact than Devonta Adams. That's now we're in agreement. I'm not asking you who's MVP. Your question to me again that started this was if you were starting a team and you picked I've and never you had to pick that. one or the other. Yes, you did. Find it and quote me. No problem. <laughs> okay, no problem. Keep looking into the corner. Find it and quote Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Sucka. I will. Sucka. Ain't no way. Ain't no half-stepping. You half-stepping right now, bruh. No. Bro, listen. All right, so all, listen, I don't want to. We, we've already gone off step. the rails. We got Andy here. I want to get into more stuff because I got to get Andy's opinion, like stuff on hockey and stuff like that, that I'm not great at. All right, but I want to talk about football because we have. Oh, no, we're going into this football. Can we segue into into, into oh, these trades for, possible? Hold on, hold on. Before we go completely off the rails, we have a, <laughs> we have a, we have a caller on the line, which we need to get to. So. 100%. Yes. Thank call, you, Andy. Caller. Uh, You're on My Sports Radio. Yes. Welcome, caller. Who do we got? I think we have multiple callers. Hello. That could be the problem. Can so, we put a caller so through? On. So listen. So for anybody who's listening right now that calls in. Yes. Last week, we had five or six callers throughout the show, sometimes at the same time, from all different area codes. When I say different area codes, I'm telling you Jersey, PA, Texas, New York. Am I right or wrong? Everywhere. Facts, bro. So – Please let's whoever calls in. We 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 do want to get to all of them. Absolutely. Let's just let let's well, we keep spread it, let's the love. keep it let's keep it brief because we do obviously anybody who picks us we want to make sure we 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 show that love. But we have so much to get to in such a little time span that sometimes when a caller calls in, I find myself going off the rails, and I want to try and keep myself on. So. Uh, to the Wizard of Oz in the back, whoever we have on the phone or, or, or whoever called in first, patch them through so we can get them in and Let's we'll try and hammer out yeah. a bunch of people um, because I want to really talk about this, the AFC matchup, the NFC matchup. So who's with us? Our caller. Is he is there with us? I, I think he's screening the call. Is he there? It sounds like he's asking him questions. Is he, he there? He's the best man. Oh, he's he's awesome. Doing, Absolutely. Right? Okay, so okay. Oz in the building. All right, Andy. All right, Go so ahead, Andy. all right, so let's let's start with the AFC Championship game. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's. The Chiefs probably put together a full sixty-minute performance for the first time since they played the New York Jets in Week Eight. Agreed. Yep. Now it's not that Buffalo played a bad game. It's just you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, man. Really. I mean, you have – now, granted, Buffalo is – they kind of remind me of the of the mid-'90s uh, Green Bay Packers when they had Brett Favre on their team. You know, they would get to the playoffs, and then they get to a division round, and then they get, then they get to the AFC Championship, you know, and the, their stock's kind of going up, 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 up. Terrible comparison. So, well. I want to see where he's going with it. He's real so, man. I mean, eventually they would get to the big game. Now, currently the trend is kind of the same as those. That's where I was trying to get at. I'm not saying that they're. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not. With you. I'm not saying that they're going to be as good as the. <laughs> The Bills yeah. have been to the playoffs two times in 20 years. Now they're the mid 90s. Well, the, no, 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 What's going on? no, 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 I'm saying the Cowboys, the Cowboys, no, I'm really saying, the Cowboys really resemble the, no, the Bills I, of the 90s. You listen, know, will, they, no, you're missing the point. <laughs> you know I'm what John saying, resembles? <laughs> no, I'm No, I'm saying the stuff. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Andy, uh, Andy. I'm I, done laughing for five no, minutes. Be, go ahead. No, but what Andy I think is trying to get to is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, we, they're building themselves up, and, and and is there is there a build me up to let me down that I'm you a, see coming? I'm going to give you a better comparison, Andy Williams. Sure. Here you go. You ready? Peyton Manning and the Colts of the 2000s. Yeah, there's another comparison Hold right on. there. Tom With Tom Brady, right? And how Peyton Manning always had to go through the Patriots and Tom Brady. Now, Josh Allen's going to have to go through Patrick Mahomes every yeah. year. I think that may be a slightly better comparison than comparing sure. them to the Packers who who were always in the playoffs. And the Bills haven't been. And we, they should be so lucky to be the, the mid-90 
the 90s Packers, really the Packers of the last 30 years, really. I mean, when have we seen the Packers be bad? Have we ever seen the Packers be bad? I've never seen the Packers. They went from, Not really, but I they think went what from, I say is they went with, from with, star to far well, to Rodgers. Buffalo now with this stout defense, I think you're going to see them making more often. Yeah. You're going to see it more often than not. You're going to see them making runs. I mean, God until really? my until yeah. my Jets step up to the plate and, and start putting a, a real roster together, which we'll get into shortly. Yep. Uh, the Bill Belichick and, and whoever's going to be his quarterback next year, whether it's Stidham, Cam Newton, or, Stop. or, or Matt Stafford, or Matt Stafford, which I got a hot take on that. It, but Andy, absolutely, I'm with you. I th- I think making that comparison, I understand what you mean. You're going to see a, 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 co- a consistent run yeah, from the Buffalo absolutely. Bills, and they will be the team in New York. And that's facts. Yeah, absolutely. See what had happened was I'm I'm <laughs> like, I'm just saying. To any of my Bills fans out there, uh, nobody circles the wagons. I was gonna say, but I won't because he did it. But what I, I'm, I'm, gonna, right. I'm gonna let you know, there is a bright future. Yes, I think that I think they have great coaching. I think they have great leadership. I think Josh Allen's on the right trajectory. Yes, they Stephon Diggs, they have Singletary's. They, they they need to use the run game more. They need a running back. They need they need another wide out. To compliment Steph Diggs, absolutely, and they need and they need a consistent pass rush. I was great point. I was going to say D tackle the end. Yes, yes. Uh, Oliver's nice, but I'm telling you, no, they great, no, they great need point. no, they, they bottom need five rush. Yes, bad can't can't win games like that. No, you cannot. Nope, can't win games like that. And again, you can't kick field goals against Patrick Mahomes at all. No. You cannot be Got kicking. Score. You cannot be kicking field goals when you have first and goal inside of the ten. They did that twice. Does Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, that might work in the regular season, not in uh, yeah, not no. in the postseason. No. In in a day and age with free agency. Yeah. Does Patrick Mahomes? How many Super Bowls do you see Patrick Mahomes realistically getting? Let's say. Pat, let's say for argument's sake. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, QBs. He's got one for eighteen years. Hmm. And he's got one right now. How many do you see him getting? How many more? Total. Total. With the with the way free agency with is. With the way free agency Correct. is and the team that he uh, based on the team that he has and the free agency, I would say at the end of the day he probably gets to maybe 3 or 4. Okay. That's a great number. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I agree. I I, th- I think he's got one under the belt. I think he hits I think he hits the 4 the 4 mark before uh, his career ends. Should he stay healthy, you know, I mean, God willing, and nobody wish again, like you said before, we don't wish any any ill will or, or injuries to anybody. But it's Except it's it's said. a <laughs> it's a collision sport, and it happens. They have injuries every single game. It's a hundred percent injury uh, injury uh, game. So you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I think he definitely hits four before his career is done, and he has a very illustrious career that we're going to be talking of about course. for years. Yeah. What was what was the one thing? What was the one thing that you felt? During the game, Whoa. so what are you talking about? So the the Bills the Bills Chiefs game in the beginning, it looked like the Bills were off to a quick start. They were up nine nothing, right? Quick start. Yep. It meant nothing. And did you feel at any moment in time that the Chiefs were, were out of it? No, you didn't, right? Tell me, no. tell me this, Andy. W- no. Would you agree with me <laughs> when you saw the Bills up by a touchdown? Did you say, "All right, now Patrick Mahomes is going to stop messing around and turn on the guns"? I basically and, and, and shoot this I out. Basic, and get, this, get this thing. I basically over. looked uh, when they went up nine nothing and they muffed that punt and. And then the Bills went in and scored. I was like, y- you're just ticking him off. And then all of a sudden, bang, 21 unanswered. Yep. <laughs> just yep. like that. I-, I seriously was not worried under any circumstances. What's... You know, so. I feel like when I when I see Patrick Mahomes playing and you see him like playing behind or they're doing these trick plays or these these scheme plays like just to try something out in the first quarter, I feel like by the second quarter, if he sees, all right, you know what? Let's not messing around. I feel like he... You know, like in um, over the top. I feel like he just turns his hat around, and that switch goes off, and he just and he just goes to town. Here was and a, he just can't stop him. Here was another thing too. Also, um, the guy who uh, who muffed the punt who was it Hartman? Yeah, McCall Hartman. Michael Hartman. He Patrick Mahomes went right to him after the Bills scored that touchdown, and said, "Dude, we need you. I'm throwing you the ball." Yep. These next three plays. And he had that huge. What play. happened? Wow, fifty yards, right? Thank you. Bananas. I mean, I'm I'm looking. Good point. I'm looking statistically. Um, Patrick Mahomes had only what eight incompletions the whole game? Nine to, nine total incompletions. Nine, yeah. 
he averaged almost almost a first down on every throw. Yeah. QBR ninety five point eight. That's a pretty good. Of one twenty seven point six. In the AFC Championship. In the AFC Championship <laughs> game, three hundred twenty five yards, three TDs. Not for one single split moment did we think that the game was out of hand. No. And let me tell you. So I, I was watching the game with a friend of mine, and and he asked me a question. And not that it, it took me very long to think about it, but I, I want your opinions. Is Travis Kelsey the best tight end you've ever seen? Andy, take it. The so best. I, I had to think about it, right? And I, I was sort of – I was thinking a lot, and there was a receiver. There was two that, that I fused together yeah. again. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, the best tight end. I mean, I got to see a couple more years first. I mean, Tony Gonzalez, I think, is the best tight end of all time. But if you right now, yes, Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in all of football. Of all time, though, it's kind of hard to argue against Tony Gonzalez and the work he's done. I, I agree with you. I love Tony Gonzalez, and, and, and I want to praise him, but... Again, we haven't seen the full body of work. This is like the question we had last right. week. Is it, if, uh, if Patrick Mahomes is going to be the greatest quarterback ever, I don't know until I see his complete body of work. Has has Kelsey Travis aspired? Kelsey's young. Yeah. Have I seen Kelsey do things that are amazing that no other mm -hmm. I mean, tight end has done? Absolutely. Yeah. And he he can run the scene with the best wide receiver, with the fastest wide receiver, with the fast uh, against the uh, toughest defense, the toughest free safeties, and the toughest strong safeties. It doesn't matter. You can't cover the guy. Yeah. And and the fact that he blocks and, and he doesn't take a playoff is amazing. To I think the stat we picked up last week was um he's got the, he's the first tight end to have five his first five seasons yeah over a thousand yards bananas and he stayed healthy Shit. all five seasons right he's played almost every game exactly. I think I think only one game he took off a half a game or something like that man. This guy is going to be something to watch. I think we still have yet to see it, but I cannot take away yeah. from the football gods that have given us Tony Gonzalez, the likes of uh, Antonio Gates. Mm -hmm. you There's know another I mean? one. And, and I mean, uh, a guy who's still playing today, who I think is one of the greats, but you know, I mean, doesn't have all the stats that the rest of the guys have until maybe he finishes his career. Mercedes Lewis. I mean, you're looking, you're looking at for for him to do these things. I think in the next ten years, we may be having that conversation. Yeah. So he looked at me and said, in his opinion, he thought Rob Gronkowski. Rob, mm, so, I, listen, I could see it. So Rob, He's Rob, probably top five all time. Rob, yes, Rob top Gronkowski, five. Rob Gronkowski in many, many articles that, that you read, sports articles, um, most of the time they have it number two or number three. That's where they have Rob Gronkowski. Most I articles. Uh, reading another one here, but, but I think I read about four or five that had him two or three. Most of them have Tony Gonzalez, number one. They have Shannon Sharp right there, kind of intertwined. Oh, how did we forget Shannon Sharp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's right. That's right. And a lot of them will flip-flop with Antonio Gates. Um, so, you know, that was that was one of them. For me, I I have Travis Kelsey as a hybrid of two, of two tight ends. Travis Kelsey, to me, has the hands of Rob Gronkowski. He never misses a pass. The guy just catches the ball. And he's and Jason Witten, where he's always in the right place yes. at the right time. A smart player. A smart player. Yeah. And the one thing that I that stops him is that incredible athleticism that like you remember how Tony Gonzalez every time he caught a touchdown he would dunk the ball over the field goal yep. post, right? Yes. So Tony Gonzalez was obviously a, a very athletic specimen, right? So that's what that's what made him special. I look at Travis Kelsey and I think five more years of this, Travis Kelsey will be so far above the rest in stats yeah. if he continues this, this this upward trajectory, it it won't even be close. When you talk about the greatest tight end of all time, and the thing that I love about Travis Kelsey also is the tight end position, it's, it's such a weird, unique position where the player is almost as big as a linebacker, yeah, but runs almost as fast as a wide receiver. So anytime he's matched up, and he's as tough it's as a mismatch. A, and he's as tough as a running back. And he's as tough as a running back. So anytime 
you have him matched up. He's matched up against the nickel Absolutely. or a linebacker. Right. Yeah, because if you got an outside linebacker him? on him, you can't cover him. He's not fast enough. No. He might be big enough, might press him at the at the line, but he's big enough that he can press back and, and fight through the, and fight through the press, swim through it, whatever, rip through it. But when you have, you know what I mean, these small free safeties and these strong safeties trying to yeah, come up, yeah. But yeah, by the way, who, he smashes. Them. Yeah, by the way, who are you gonna? By the way, who's gonna tackle Travis Travis Kelsey? Oh, it's not one person. It's not one person. Oh yeah. His, uh, whenever whenever you see him go 15, 20 yards down the field, it always takes him multiple players to bring him down. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I mean, monster on on this list. You know, Shannon Sharp's up there. Kellen Winslow. Um, yeah. Oh, big you know, names. The the dad, obviously, senior, and mm-hmm. Ozzy Newsome, um, yeah. Browns legend. You know, I where does Ditka rank on that list? Number seven. Oh, nice, right there. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I I, I see a lot of these old school players. The position, is Casper, the friend. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Dave Casper. The position is obviously not. Um, it doesn't warrant so much attention, right? Right. Like the tight end position is not so flashy. So so a lot of them kind of even though they do nicer things like a Greg Olson who's been a who's been like a perennial pro bowler. He was there for a long time. He's not going to warrant so much attention. But the fact is, is is when I when I watch Kelsey, you can clearly see he is such a crazy game changer at yeah. the tight end position. I mean, guys, these stats here, he, you're talking about twice over 100 catches. One of them, he, uh, another year in 97. And 10 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns, eight, eight touchdowns. Uh, 1,125 yards. He's consistent. 1,300. Consistent. 1, consistent. And it, it really is. He's such a game changer. And the reason why I say it is because when we go to this game that just took place, Travis Kelsey had 13 catches for 118 yards. Exactly. In the AFC Championship game and two tutties. Mm-hmm. It, it's just incredible. He averaged nine yards a catch. Yeah. The guy's in the right place. At the right time. And to get to the next one, Tyreek Hill, nine catches, 172 yards. Now, wow. now here's the thing. Is there is there a, a bigger playmaker when the ball gets into his hands than Tyreek Hill? No. I think, yeah, I, I think what you're trying to say, is he the most dangerous once he gets the, the ball? The most dynamic. Absolutely. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely, because I mean, he you, you can't catch him. Did you see the one run where he gets in between? He got him. He ran like another forty yards after he caught the ball. He gets in between the safeties, runs back a couple yards, gets around the safeties, lets his lineman block for him. Get gives his lineman time and his speed. His speed is so uncanny that it allows for him to slow down while you're catching up. His lineman catches up and he can get around his lineman in a in a in the blink of an eye. Is there is there ever a time? Where Tyreek Hill catches the ball and you don't think this guy's all he's gone. Yeah, every time he catches the ball in in the open field, and there's like a little sliver of crease. Yeah, you, you know who else reminded me of that too? You know who else used to be that kind of receiver before his injuries? Every single time he caught the ball over the middle on a five yard slant, little slant. Every time Odell Beckham yep. Jr. Yeah. When he was healthy. Every single time Odell caught the ball over the middle of the field for five yards, I promise you, I, I would always think to myself, he's out. Yeah. He he was Odell was so freaking quick. It was insane to watch that guy when he had the ball in his hands on a quick slant, dude. That guy was nuts. Him and Tyreek, I always feel when they get the ball, dude, pfft, later. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's crazy. So the AFC It's unfortunate with all the injuries, man. The AFC we see we we can we envision for years Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, depending on where he goes to, will be vying for yes. top position. I also do feel sooner or later we're going to hear Justin Herbert's name in, in that that conversation. Justin Herbert came in this year, and it's very unfortunate, but I also thought that the upward trajectory of the Bengals with Joe Burrow was also I, it made me feel as though they were heading the right direction. They had their franchise QB. Mm-hmm. Watching him play was super fun. 
That kid's um, tough. He took he, a lot of hits. He could sling the ball. So now we're going to go over to the NFC. Many storylines in the NFC, Oh, guys. God. Many, okay? We have off-season moves coming up in, in the NFC. Yes. We have a potential changing of the guard. We have the old dog in Tom Brady still ticking away, mm-hmm. right? This past game, we saw Aaron Rodgers with his discount double check going up against the GOAT and Tom Brady. 14 championship games, 70% of his career in upper echelon championship games, six time Super Bowl winner. He's now been to 10. Super Bowl going to be so he's now been now go well n- going to ten right so my question is this for you with the NFC this game you saw was it more of Tom Brady being the great Tom Brady or was it more of bad time management on the Packers mismanaging the end of the game what do you think what do you think happened at, at the end of that game I think. In the first, I think it was both. To be perfectly okay. honest with you, the first half, Tom Brady played an unbelievable first half of football. In the second half, Tom Brady was seven for fourteen with three picks. Not so good, Tom Brady. But however, when Tom Brady has thrown for three or more interceptions in a playoff game, he's three and one. Aaron Rodgers, when throwing for three or more touchdowns in a game, he's lost. It's basically Tom Brady can overcome more, you know, when he's when the chips are down than when the chips are down for Aaron Rodgers. It's eh. But here's the thing. Everybody wants to throw throw blame on the coach and throw blame on the defense. Well, you can't really blame you can't really blame the defense because they held Tampa to under 20 first downs the whole game. So you can't really go there. You can't I mean, yes, there is blame to go around to Matt LaFleur. One, you know, there has to be some blame there. But what I'm very puzzled about and I was very puzzled about on Sunday and Monday and also yesterday why hasn't anybody put any blame on Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. There has to be some blame there. Ever since he has won the Super Bowl back in 2010, do you know what his playoff record is? 7 and 8. That separates the good ones from the great ones. That's right. Yes, he has a Super Bowl ring, but on second and third down, from the pocket, he could have ran to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh man! Into the end zone. You know, I'm with you with that. And now, with that, yes, again, Matt Lafleur kicking the field goal. That was a poor decision. One hundred percent. You have to. You absolutely have to go for it there on fourth down. I don't care what the analytics are. I don't care if you have three timeouts. You have the MVP of the National Football League, 48 touchdowns, five interceptions, and you don't go for it. You take the ball out of his hands. You play to win the game. Yes. Or at least play to win, play to get the tie. But <laughs> but anyway, but besides the point, um, I think that there should be multiple blames here. Matt LaFleur, yes, bad play calling. However, there needs to be some blame starting to get put on Aaron Rodgers now. Absolutely, I agree with you. When when the the, the coaching it, the, enough blame to go around was perfectly said, because uh, aside from the bad coaching towards the end of the game, there was a couple plays before that uh, that third down that I felt like they got a, that the field goal that they, I felt like they got a little lucky oh. anyway. Oh, and also and also too, uh, start of the fourth quarter, Brady throws back to back picks, first two drives. The drives coming off the uh, the interceptions, mm-hmm. three and out, three and out, six yep. plays minus five yards. Absolutely, I feel like Tom Brady finds a way to uh, turn those turn. When he gets an opportunity, he tries to make the most of it. I feel like uh, when they when they had some bad plays and they got lucky a couple times, that one of them should have been a pick. They they go three and out. They bad play calling after that. 
when when I mentioned also why didn't why didn't Aaron Rodgers run to the corner to the pylon? He could have ran to right? Minneapolis for and God's sake. I thought too. Somebody brought to my attention. Rewatch the film. JPP was there. He probably would have hawk, hawked him. Okay, I understand. Mm, no, he wouldn't but, have. <laughs> but even if JPP less two fingers gets there, I don't. I don't think with the momentum, the the angle that he was going, I I don't think anybody would have stopped him. I think he would have made it to the pylon. They could have won that game. There was a there was the same play also that happened when in the last round where Aaron Rodgers ran for the touchdown against the Rams. He ran it. Yep. That clinched the game. I'm going to give you guys facts. a facts. I'm going to give you a complete perspective. Sure. LaFleur's decision was not a bad one. You ready for it? Yeah. In the second half, even furthermore, after the touchdown that Tampa Bay had in the second half, right. they scored three points in the remaining 20 minutes of the game. So here's what I'm going to say to you. Yeah, you, you can't blame the, the defense. The Packers completely shut down the box. Yeah. Okay. Matt LaFleur at the end of the game, and he actually played it right, and I'm going to tell you why he did. Matt LaFleur said we're going to kick the field. We're going to be eight points away. Okay? Five. Five. Five, yeah. But anyway, okay, go ahead. Sorry, we're going to be five points away. Yep. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers offense has been completely inept in the last 20 minutes, yeah. including three turnovers. Agreed. Yeah. I'm going to put my defense out there. I have the two-minute two minute warning because the guy who received the kick decided uh, he was going to slide yeah. Before, okay. yeah. right. at 2.02. So we gave him a two-minute warning and three timeouts. So you gave him four timeouts, essentially. We gave him four timeouts. Okay. My defense has completely shut down Tom Brady the second half. Mm-hmm. Well, they put your defense the back Bucks' up. backs are against the wall. All <laughs> momentum – is with the Packers. Yeah. So LaFleur says, I'm going to trust my D because Tom Brady's got nothing left going on right now. The defense came out. You guys are forgetting. They stopped the Buccaneers. But what happened? There was a pass interference, the very late call for pulling the jersey. Remember? Yes. Okay. okay. All, all right. right. All right. So Here's they the, stopped them in third down. They I, called the pass interference. And, and – and, and they gave him a new set of was, So you're saying ha- had that not happened, that, that, it, it would have been a great back. defense. Okay. They would have got the ball yes. back. And, and and I'm glad you brought right. this up, too, because a lot of people are forgetting about this. Nor They did not call any pass interference that entire they didn't call anything. game. They called nothing. nothing. Yeah. And now all of a sudden there was a jersey pull. It was and a weak it got, ball. And, all right. All right. So, so let me just – so let me just throw a scenario out there. Yeah. Let me just say that I pull your jersey, the, right. the back of your shirt. Which way are you going to go? Are you going to move backwards or are you going to go forwards? Well, he's it's that's a come on. You're you're yeah, going gonna go, you're gonna going go backwards. backwards. Yeah. Okay, but you're talking about guys full speed. The fact that it matters is if I'm running full speed and you grab my undershirt which he grabbed, he didn't I'm, grab yes. I'm, I'm pulling you. I'm pulling you. Yeah, because I'm running I'm running very fast, right. and they're bigger guys. But they're not going to fall forward, though. Come on. I'm. I mean, I'm, I mean, trust me. I wasn't. I wasn't good at. Forward. I wasn't good at physics. Forward. Bro, he flopped. He exactly. Flopped. He flopped. And then the ball was past him, and then he and then it looked like a sniper from. And ball after the him. exactly yeah. and. I mean, the guy went down like a heap of bricks. Tell me, the guy didn't look like he got shot by a sniper. No, it was no, it was it was a hundred percent. It was a flop. Yeah, I mean, my guy looked like LeBron the, James out there on the basketball court. And then, <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing, too. It wasn't the side judges. It wasn't the... It was the judge on the other side. It was the judge who was 30 yards back of yeah. the play, and he called it five seconds after the ball well after. hit the ground. Well after. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, listen, I'm okay. I am completely okay with... Refs making calls. We have seen calls that have looked way worse than this. Oh sure, a la yeah. Saints and Rams. Oh, you remember 100%. when the guy got? <laughs> the you miracle. remember? You remember yeah. when Goldberg put on? Pass, pass you interference. When Goldberg gate. put on a yep. Rams, Rams a Rams jersey, jersey and, speared, and speared, speared the guy in the outside. Yeah, and nobody called anything. Everyone looked around like, okay, this is. I'm expecting Ashton Kutcher and, and pranked to come in here because there's no way that. That this could have actually happened legitimately. The fact of the matter is, is you you physically saw a pulled jersey, regardless of the effect and the theatrics 
that the guy did after. Oh, it was a wonderful performance. It really was. You say, we saw the pull jersey. Yes. Oscar so, award sure. They say it every time. When you see a pull jersey Oscar 10 out of 10 times, they are going to call the penalty, right? No matter if you see an arm hooked under for an offensive lineman and the D lineman, even when he has no chance of getting the running, the D lineman goes holding, right? Because you of course. know they're going to flop backwards. Yeah, of course. The fact of the matter is they know that, that they can sell it. And when the jersey was pulled and my guy got shot by the sniper from Call of Duty and he fell down sideways, he should have fallen backwards, but he fell down sideways. Three Obviously, of the, three of the smart, three of the referees didn't call it. The guy said the guy can justify it by saying, "Look at the replay. Look at the jersey. I'm okay with it. I would have liked to have seen the holding, right? Yeah. I would have liked to have seen other things during the game that I felt were a little sus. All I'm saying is, is we talked about Lafleur. We talked about the fact that Lafleur made a decision and he got killed about it. Lafleur made a decision." analytics, gut feeling, I do not care if he literally put a thermometer in his butt and thought that the temperature told him to give the ball back. I don't care where he got the, the that answer from. The fact of the matter is this. The Buccaneers had not scored. They had not scored more than three points in 20 minutes. And Your defense has had three turnovers, had made Tom Brady look like he was scared to be in the pocket. You go and you put your defense on the field with four timeouts. Four. And they played the game, and it was the right call. That ref made a bad call on his end. It was a pass interference. It gave the ball back to them. They only had one timeout left after that. And they ran the clock out. And the out. game was a wrap. And the fact is, you are not – we say it all the time, even with the greatest shooters in the NBA – you can't give great shooters a second chance. No. They'll never miss. No. Right? They'll never miss. So you gave Tom Brady another opportunity to get can't first do down. That. You cannot do that. And that's what cost them the game. People who say LaFleur is the reason no. they are a joke. No. You are absolutely not. You are looking you are looking for reasons to be mad at the refing. Does he does LaFleur deserve a little, just a little bit of the blame for the whole sure. team. Yeah, the whole sure. Team. Whole team. It's but again, it's a team sport. There needs to be some blame put on number twelve as I'm, well. I'm okay with that. Now let me ask you a question, yeah. Danny. Okay. Yeah. What's up? We saw a headline, right? That Which one? Aaron Rodgers. Um, they asked him about his future. In oh Green God. Bay. I okay. heard. I now heard. Uh, I, I heard a report that that now Aaron Rodgers wants to renegotiate and get a new long term longer. Oh my deal God! In Green Bay, so I ask you this: <laughs> He's he's under the cap for forty five mil coming up. Yep. He's thirty seven, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers had statistically his greatest year yet of his career. Yeah. Ever. You yep. have Jordan Love sitting behind him. If you're Green Bay, what do you do, Danny? <sighs> I mean, you definitely don't take a sigh like that. <laughs> you got to sign Aaron Rodgers. You gotta sign him. Wait, wow. whoa, if you're Green whoa, Bay, you gotta whoa. sign him. Okay, tell me why. Tell All me right. why. Yeah, my yeah, my, my ahead, point is ahead. only because I mean, it, you sign him. I, I don't think you you offer him immediately all the money that he's expecting to get, and I don't think it's going to be for the longest term either. I think you sign the guy for another two to three years with, I mean, back end loaded stuff. But that uh, when you got Jordan Love, you got his his replacement already there. He's going to be looking to troll whoever again to try to get money and put his name out there. What if I, Aaron Rodgers says, I want a five-year deal? I don't think you could what sign him on a five-year Brady, deal. What if, nope. Tom, what if he said, Tom Brady's 43 and, and, and Drew Brees is 42. I just put up my best season yet. I'm 38. Sign me four years. What do you do? You said four or five. If, I don't think you can do four. five years. I don't think four, four. years either. Five. I think you got to sign him to two or three years. I think he's already passed his no. prime. And he's, do you think you sign him, you sign him for five years? No. No, right? Yeah, I think I think if you sign him for two to three years, I say you trade him. That'd be great. You trade him. You drafted a quarterback in the fr- which you moved up to get your so you're gonna get compensatory future. And this laser. is some laser exactly. <laughs> you could still get a buck and a half to the dollar for Aaron Rodgers. 
you can get a ton of draft picks. You could get a very good receiver, a very good running back, a good pass rush. I mean, so then, That's a good thought. so then, so then, if you let's say you do resign him, then what the heck was the point in drafting Jordan Love then in 2020? What was is the Jordan point? Love, is Jordan Love proven? I thought that was a stupid what pick was to begin the, with. What was the point? Exactly. Was there a point to signing a quarterback in the I have first no idea. round? I, I didn't like that. When you, when you got three or four years left on Aaron Rodgers, I don't think you signed his uh, replacement. I, I don't mean, know. I mean, I, th- I like your point because if you, if you do if you do tournament, you, you get you get another couple first rounders, a second round, a third round, easily, and you you absolutely rebuild your team. And even if Jordan Love doesn't turn out to be the guy, you have a couple more picks to make up. See now, see now. In, so I, I like your point. See in the off season now, you have these big name quarterbacks, and I know you're going to be segueing into this, John. You have now you have Deshaun Watson. And now you have now you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who might be who are wanting trades. It really changes up the mix. It changes up everything, and you know that some team is going to offer something like a Herschel Walker kind of deal, right? To get either a Deshaun Watson or an Aaron Rodgers on their team for three or four years. I agree, and I, and I made a point about that on Facebook, actually, the other day on one of my posts or somebody else's post. I think I was on um, one of the Jets fans' posts. They were talking about uh, trading our, our whole future for Deshaun Watson and an, another big quarterback. Uh, I think you got to build on that draft. I mean, after that Herschel Walker trade, they built through the draft immediately, and the Cowboys immediately had a dynasty. And I don't think it's guaranteed every time. But the more picks you have early on, the better shot you got. Am I wrong? If all right, let me let me throw this scenario out there for you. Yeah. The Jets obviously are the leading candidate, supposedly, for Deshaun Watson. Right. Let's say the Jets. I don't Je- know where you're saying that, but I, okay. well, no, it's, so, so no, other- it's it's down to bet- well, right now it's down to between wanna, the Jets and the Dolphins. I just I just want to. Follow up with the Aaron Rodgers really quick. Sure, sure, sure. Do you think Aaron Rodgers at his age and his contract yields any sort of draft value whatsoever? I, I think it for does. three to four years, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes I, I do think that's by MVP the, of the league. You can, um, by the way, it's it's an incredibly ridiculous statement to make because you're once again now trapped in the "What have you done for me lately?" And this is why the Packers. Fair enough. This is why the Packers. Okay. Are in, are going to be in such a, a conundrum? The year before they already are. Remember the, the two the <laughs> two years are. the two years before that. <laughs> Understatement. The two years before that, why, why did they draft Love? Mm. Because they felt that Aaron Rodgers was was on the downtick mm. and he was getting up in age, so they didn't have a choice but to get his successor. Aaron Rodgers now and he was unhappy with management and he was unhappy with management. So now this year, Aaron Rodgers plays way up above and beyond. Okay. And now all of a sudden, you think that teams are going to look at that and say, "Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to review the last few years. I'm not getting Aaron Rodgers at 27. I'm going to review the last few years. He hasn't been the same quarterback. Clearly, this year he was above and beyond. But do I mortgage my future for two years, or do I maybe go with a, a shorter, a, a, a better plan if I'm going to mortgage my future?" Into Watson. Now go ahead. See, and now and now I'm I'm hearing too also, and I've read on a couple Jets websites that the trade for Watson is going to be two ones, two twos this year, a one next year. Like they're going to throw the farm. Yeah. So I, I don't. I don't think that that's going to happen. And we talked about that too. You told me that there was if there was a cap for two first round, you, they're going to want two, three first rounders plus. That means uh, maybe a second or a third rounder, and then somebody maybe from the defense. I don't think you can. I don't think you can destroy the team and create more holes by filling one. I like that everybody thinks because he's a he's a Pro Bowler. He's proven. Great. I like if you can sure. get him for 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 two first round draft picks and and Sam Darnold. But I don't think that's going to happen. Well, they're, they're not going to trade it. Sam Darnold. Well, well, what I'm saying. I don't think. Well, listen. If you if you if you make a trade for Deshaun Watson, you can't keep you can't keep Darnold. Well. Isn't he still under contract? He's still under contract for a lot of money, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, <laughs> but you, you got to get rid of him. 
right? I mean, you're, yeah, you're not no. going to pay the two quarterbacks, right? Because then next year Deshaun Watson's going to you're going to have to pick up his contract and you're going to have to pay him too. That's true. And so that's... You, you're not going to be able. It's not feasible. So it doesn't make any sense the Deshaun Watson directly to the Jets. However, Matt Stafford is available. I don't think Matt Stafford is coming to the Jets, and no. I wouldn't. And again, you can get him cheaper. And get rid of Sam Darnold and and maybe a draft pick and still dr- fill fill in your team with the draft. However, I think this is if it does happen, and this this may be far fetched, but I mean we've seen a lot of crazy stuff happen. A three way trade involving multiple picks from a couple teams to Houston, so that the hometown boy Matt Stafford goes to Houston, Watson comes to the Jets. Detroit gets draft picks and Sam Darnold. I think that's the only that's... logical way that if if a GM can put his big boy hat on and put something together, it's going to take another team to be involved. But to to mortgage the future for just Deshaun Watson, let's look at what happened when when they got Deshaun Watson and tried to build around him and yeah. gave up their draft picks. Now look at them; they were four, what, four and twelve last year. Right, so what is the Jets going to become the new the new Texans? Maybe. No, that doesn't make sense. Logically, I don't see Joe Joe Douglas doing that. His historical picks and the way he manages the team and the organization and the talent on the team, I don't see him making that mistake. Just going straight straight for Watson and mortgaging the future. Uh, if you can get a guy like Watson, make a couple trades and then pick up somebody, but you're not giving up picks plus Quinn and Williams. Or whatever it was that well, they had that a local was the re- other player they, that was being proposed right there. Right, they had a lo- it was a local reporter from from the tech that yep. usually covers the Texans organization that made that comment. However, let's take a look at the first facts. John, is there a no trade clause still for Deshaun Watson? Right, absolutely. No trade clause. Deshaun Watson has talked a lot, liked a lot of stuff on social media. You know what? So have I. My friends have made fun of me for it too. Now, it's including true. John, right? Now. If he has not officially asked, he can complain about whatever he wants to the media. If he has not officially asked his team for a trade, what are we talking about, guys? The, the Jets fans need to calm down, slow the roll, reel it back in. There's still three months left. We still need to see what we can get for Darnold, see what we can build around, and see how many picks we can use. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense to mortgage the whole future for Deshaun Watson, and you still have defensive end to fill. You got, you got a middle linebacker that may come back, may not come back. So you're going to have to fill that hole. You got, okay, Marcus May, great. Love him. He played really well last year. We still lost almost every game, and he got burnt on the one play he needed to cover somebody. Come on. There's too many holes to fill. You need cornerbacks. There, there's no way you can mortgage the future at the, if you're the Jets. If Joe D signs and makes some magic happen, and, and you give up two draft picks, no problem, John. You're right. If there's two draft picks, it's a no-brainer. If it's two draft picks and it's, Sam it's, Donald, it's, and maybe it's not going to be two draft picks. Though. I know exactly. I know that's obvious. It's not going to be. They're going to want the. They're going to want a farm for him. You need. They're going to want Herschel Walker stuff. You, you exactly. Need two, you need two more linemen to go with Anthony Beck. Beck. You need three. So you need well, right side played wetter, played well. Uh, you, what's his name played well, but he, he's still a turnstile. The, and you need two guards. The, the yeah. Jets need the everything. Are, the center, okay, the let, let's be honest. The Jets need everything. That's what I mean. Well, it's not. I wouldn't say everything, but you got you got three guys, and maybe you get somebody back. You got maybe six guys. It's still you still need the other half of the team plus the defense. You need your you need your your new Bart Scott. You yep. Need, you need your new Darrell Revis. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. You the need, only way you're going to do this through the draft. Your, you need your new Nick Mangold. You, you need, need youth a, and speed. You need a running back. You no, I'm 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 actually okay with the youth that they have back there because we don't know due to the injuries. P Ryan showed some flash. The yeah. other guy showed some flash too. Uh, I forgot what his name was. Young guy, but he showed some flash. Here's the thing: any schmo can put up big numbers in a system with good offensive linemen. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we've we've seen it time and time again. If you remember, Sanchez, Mike Shanahan's system in the Broncos, every single year had a different 1,000 yard running back. Well after Terrell Davis was done, yeah, you put anybody and everybody in there, Willis McGahee, everybody, will o- rush for over a thousand yards. Right. So the fact is, you have the right scheme with the right offensive linemen put in place good play action, you can have a running game that's effective. Mm-hmm. You need offensive line, 
You need another big pass rusher. Quinton Williams is finally starting to look comfortable. He's looking good. And Salah said that he really, liked, level. he really liked what he saw from Quinton Williams. Yeah. By the way, I heard the interview that Salah had with the Michael K show. Let me tell you. I have heard All gas, a, no breaks. I have heard a few interviews in my life that really made me feel as though I bought in wholeheartedly. Stevie Cohen's interview with the Mets. Yep. When I listened to it, I said, I am all in on this guy. And Salah's interview on the Michael K show, there was not one question he he strayed away from. He went at and and the questions he didn't have an answer. He said, it's hard for me to answer this question right now. It is a great question, but I'm going to answer you in the best way that I can. He talked about Quinn and Williams being one of the players he he loved watching and seeing. He said Sam Darnold had a lot in his mind that he had to look at and that he felt he could get a lot out of now. Could this be a lot of gesturing for trade, stuff like that? Yes. But Salah strikes me as the type of guy that's, that's no nonsense. Yep. He's just going to tell you football. how it is. And I'll tell you what. He made another great point, which if you're a Jets fan, Can't you, wait. you have to feel good about this. The Michael K. Show said in the new era of the NFL – in the offensive-minded era of the NFL, everyone said defensive-minded coaches cannot be successful, right? So Michael K. said, what do you say to those people who said that? And Salah said, you know what? It's a great question to ask. I'm a little biased, but he said, I would assume that coaches like Bill Belichick – Brian Flores, yeah. um, Sean McDermott, yeah. John Harbaugh mm -hmm. um, have all been, and he kept going down the list. Who else did he say? He said those guys. He named like 10 guys. And there was a few other. Oh, Pete Carroll. Mm -hmm. um, and he named a few others that were like Mike Tomlin. He named a few, like a, a couple more, and he said, "He said, uh, I think they've done a pretty good job. So, I'm gonna be a complete head coach, just because I was. Oh, and Joe Judge, he said he taught special teams. He goes, you know, I'm gonna be a, a complete head coach, and I'm going to be involved everywhere. And when I hear that as a Jets fan, just as a fan of the game for myself, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm a Cowboys fan, but I'm a fan of the game. You're a Jets yeah. fan." Right. I listen to that and say, wow, this guy's got his head on straight. He's ready to go. He's ready to get to work. He's ready to dive into the trenches. He's got his cleats on. He's got his shoulder pads on and his Mouth helmet on. Mouthpiece on. He is ready. Chin strap ready to go. He's ready. And you know, you know what I, I love about him, too, how hungry he is? I don't know if you heard. The guy's got six kids with a seventh on, the, on way. the way let's go and he's like the guy oh gas no breaks who's hungry and it's you could tell he's a family oriented guy and i love that man mm -hmm. i love it bro and, and you you just you can see the last time i felt the jets were really anybody was when rex ryan was there and rex ryan has an actual identity to him right he's a right. player's coach he goes in, he galvanizes the players, he changes the culture, and they win. Salah, to me, just, dude, he just makes me feel like he's going to do that immediately. He's going to connect to the players. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care. There's too much talk on the background of somebody. Whatever he is, whatever ethnicity he is, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something, dude. When this guy walks into that locker room, he could look like Oscar the Grouch, the way he talks and the way he presents himself, all of us would follow that type of guy. Mm -hmm. So getting past whatever the guy looks like or whatever his background is, you could clearly see he is the man. He's the goods. He's the real deal. Any and, Jet and, fan and I can't wait. Any Jet fan should be pumped up. And I'll Let's tell go you, Jets. Any New York fan should be pumped up with the fact that Joe Judge looked good. And... Tom Thibodeau with the Knicks, he looks solid. And McDermott with the Bills, they look solid. 
Stevie Cohen with new ownership with the Mets looks solid. Cashman continuing to do exactly what he's done for the past quarter century and put the Yankees as perennial winners. They look solid. All New York teams really have uh, have a lot to look up yes. to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an exciting time for, for the New York market. God willing, it all comes into fruition. But guys, listen, we are here now at the tail end of an amazing, amazing show. Andy, as always, you surprised Dan today. Um, yeah, that was, but driving, was nice. nice driving three and a half that. hours. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen Andy uh, Tuesday nights on Simply Sports, he's kind of, he dove right back into something he loved to do. And he goes on, he talks sports. Um, he articulates his points very, very well. He really hammers home the hammers home the things that he feels. I love listening to you, Andy, on Thank Tuesday night. So, tune in at any time you any time you get to. He throws it right up on on his Facebook, so he's easy to watch. Great content, easy to listen to. Great content. So definitely uh, watch. You know, simply sports with Andy Williams on Tuesday nights. Andy, is there a specific time? You, you Seven know? p.m. is live. Okay, but cool. um, yeah, um, I always throw up the rebroadcast every single. Uh, on, it's on my page. Very easy to find, and very quickly before we uh, we go, uh, this is the last time I, that I'm going to see you guys before the big game. Oh yeah, Super Bowl Fifty Five. So you probably need a prediction out of me. Let's do it. So back in September, when you guys had Bro Fluent on, I remember I called in on the show. And I said very distinctly that it would be Kansas City versus Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl. And each and every one of you laughed at I me. I laughed. I was you the were first on the, one, Andy. You were on the ground laughing at me, Daniel. I was. Andrew? I, I, I Andy? Remember. I don't remember. It, I, no, listen, I take it on the chin. I take it on the chin um, with the best of them. My apologies, man. You, so, you called it. So here, here's my prediction for Super Bowl 55. Now, the over-under is at 56-and-a-half, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Kansas City is favored by three points. I've won the last five games uh, going against the number. Seven and five against the number, nine and three picking games. Here is where I lie. Tampa Bay 28, Kansas City 27. Wow. Tom Brady... Leads wins number seven. Wins number seven. Destiny is fulfilled. And Tom Brady leads his team on a two minute drill to win the Super Bowl. Never bet against Tom Brady. That's it. Period. Listen, I understand that never bet against Tom Brady, but it, I think this team is too dynamic. I think the Chiefs win again and they repeat. Like I said, week one. Well, you guys have another week to think about your pick. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess the down line, here. the line may move. I don't I don't have that luxury. I can't come down here next week as much as I would love to, but No, but I think you called that it was like week two or week three. I mean that it was the week we were doing the uh like I actually, the fantasy I, draft. We, we so that a that's big, a good call. Good on you, big, bro. We have a big, big, big we have a big week coming up next week. You wanna know why? Huge. You wanna know what next week is? Uh, uh, it's the Super Bowl week. You want to know what's on? You know what? You want to know what's on the Super Bowl week every single year? Your birthday commercials. My, my birthday, kid. Your birthday. Oh, your baby. birthday. So, That's right. So next week. Well, I'm, welcome to how welcome, young are you going to be? Welcome to my I age. Will be, I will be thirty-five years young. <laughs> oh, you uh, on young our bucks. show next week. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll be a fun show. It'll be a birthday show, which is cool. And we'll get to talk about you know going into the Super Bowl and uh, amongst obviously many many other things. I have a little bit of a fun idea that I, I may want to uh, I may want to do next week. But Andy, thank you. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank you for thank you for joining us, brother. Absolutely. And guys and girls, for everybody who tuned in today, which was a ton of people, man. Thank you once again Absolutely. for riding out with us. Mad uh, love. For anybody who we didn't get to, Johnny Butters, I do apologize for not getting to your call today, dude. We had, yeah, we had so a lot much of people, on buddy. the docket, and we do, we really do. Thank God, man. We've had so many people calling in the last couple weeks, which is, which is incredible. Because the first few months we were doing it, you know, we'd, we'd have to say the number for people to want to call. And now we have now people we're calling like overflowing. and holding. I love it. So, I love it. So – 
what really needs to happen is we just need to get some extra time. It's got to be because Andy's so handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his, and his head is very shiny. Yes, So, absolutely. guys and girls, listen, right. thank you. Thank you once again. You're going to catch us here in six, six days, days 22, 22 hours. hours. You're riding out here with the dynamic duo listening on HamiltonRadio.net, simulcast on Facebook, soon to be Spotify as well. This is your boy, John Intel, with his partner in crime, Daniel Mercado, and the host of Simply Sports, Andy, Andy Williams. Williams. Guys and girls, MSR's out. We'll catch you later. Thank you very much. Peace. You're rocking with the newest radio show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Deals. And Barnes hits one high.